not a con. Surprise, surprise, if you've seen the show at all, you know that that's what I'm into. Uh, to me, the Commodore 64 is quite possibly the leader in the 80s microcomputer market. Uh, it enjoyed immense success from, you know, it, its beginning all the way till its dying uh, mainstream gasp in the mid-90s. Uh, the Commodore, uh, well, you know what? It would really help if I had my presentation <laughs> right there. Uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where is it? Oh. Yep. Sleep doesn't work well for me. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, there we go. Well, the, the Commodore 64 often gets placed in, you know, just, you know, in, in the crowd of the other microcomputers, such as like the Atari ST and the uh, TRS-80, which are all the other fine systems, but I, I really don't think it, it was really on the same playing field as the others for the, the sheer fact of its architecture and uh, its support that it had back then. Uh, the Commodore seemed like, you know, just another computer, but there are also, you know, what made it different was there are thousands of unique uh, pieces of the software and there was also a very strong third-party hardware support um, you know when and matched by Commodore's forward thinking of just you know giving out the uh, specifications of the hardware and uh, you know software uh, programmers reference to anybody let the average Joe or tinkerer you know do about anything he wanted on the Commodore um, in modern respects the C64 hardware is fairly generic you know it's the it's 6502 processor is still used and a whole variety of light duty digital applications. So um, getting programming uh, references and um, guides for its assembly structure is still pretty easy to do. Um, let's see. Now in every classic platform circle, there's you know the nostalgia community. And Commodore has a fairly big one. Um, C64.com is probably a great, you know, it's probably the best place to go to get ROMs. It's got thousands of ROMs online. And Lemon64 is a um, has forums, it also has ROMs, it has reviews, it just has, it's like a big history book for C64 stuff. And uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool. They've got, they've got pictures, for, I mean, boxes, uh, box scans, uh, poster scans, anything you'd ever want to know about the Commodore and, you know, how it was back in its heyday. Um, I think what really makes the C64 unique, that in addition to its nostalgia community, uh, the, there's also a technical, a, a real technical community behind it still. There's still people that are releasing new hardware, new pieces of software that are all based on the original technology. And actually some are new pieces of technology that are um, intermingling with, with, with the old one and allowing for uh, some really stunning results such as, well, like the IDE64 attachment allows for uh, oh, IDE, um, well, ID hard drives and uh, CD-ROMs to be used in conjunction with it, along with compact flash adapters. Um, and that's the advancing technology that I was supposed to swi <laughs> switch to. Um, uh, CMD is actually a company that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I want to go over a few of the companies that are, uh, I, I think, really supplying some of the cool advancements in Commodore technology. CMD produced, uh, well, they came to the forefront with Jiffy DOS, which was basically their own OS for the Commodore 64. It allowed for um, faster file handling, things like that. It was, you know, a DOS for the Commodore. It was a lot easier to use. And they also supplied um, the Super CPU, which I think was amazing. Um, it's a, um, well, it's a processor adapter that allows a jump from the standard one megahertz to over 20 megahertz, which you know, still big whoop, you know, it's just 20 megahertz, but compared to the system architecture and the way that it's designed, it's actually a really big improvement. And uh, they also did the Super RAM adapter, which allows from 64K RAM up to 16. Um, let's, see. let's scroll down here. Um, I, I just really feel this is like one of the best contributions. Uh, one of the sad parts about CMD is 
um, as of July 2004, they turned over all their Commodore product line to a small in de, um, design company that's uh, actually owned just by one individual, and he's not planning on producing any more of the product. Uh, actually, I tried to contact him, and he's just not open to it, uh, actually furthering this line anymore. But but he did release some. Um, actually, CMD did release the schematic, so it, it's now available to those who are, who are brave enough to want to build the, the Super CPU. But aside from that setback, another exciting development is the Modernity Group's release of the Wings operating system for the Commodore 64. Now, Wings is uh, a, a totally modern operating system for the C64. It allows, well, it's a 16-bit OS that allows for multitasking. It does, however, require the CMD processor, uh, does, not re um, does not require this um, Super RAM attachment. But it allows for things such as like you know a graphical user interface, multiple shell accounts, and integration with the internet via, you know via TCP/IP. And the uh, current possibilities with Wings and stuff that I've got to use are stuff like you know IRC chatting, receiving and sending emails, telnetting to shell accounts or BBSs, um, viewing JPEGs or high-res bitmap images. I mean, there's lots of things you can do. I've uh, seen people you know audio editing, you know, Wave, S3M, MP3, you know, all this with the Commodore, which, you know, it, it's weird because it allows you to do almost anything you could think of on this dated technology. Um, they also uh, help in the production of the ID64, which on the packet sniffers, if you've watched uh, any of it, you'll see me reviewing this item, and uh, I really like it a lot. It's, <laughs> it's very nice to replace all your um, real flaky disks with a uh, uh, true stable IDE technology. Um, they also have a whole host of other items. Heavy duty power supplies, um, mouse adapters, interfaces to modern PS2 keyboards. They, they, they've really helped the connectivity with uh, actual PC hardware. It's, it's kind of nice. Um, now another company I'd like to touch on is ProDivision. Now ProDivision isn't really, they're a developer, but they're more of a distributor more than anything. They deal in, go down here, as I can tell you. Um, um, they, they deal in um, just getting um, Euro European releases of hardware and software out to the American, North American market to, to people that you know, wouldn't normally get the chance to have this for their systems. Um, they also tour some of the biggest Commodore shows this side of the ocean. They've got... Um, they demonstrate and sell its product line, and, I mean, all over the place. And they also accept mail orders even from overseas. Um, they also design totally original games and pieces of software. And um, they utilize the su Super CPU and the Super RAM adapter. And actually, here's one of the trailers for their game, or for one of their game. I believe this one's called Metal Dust. Uh, well, I'm watching it. Oh, there we go. You know, by today's standards, this is a whole awful lot. But, but for the Commodore, you know, having, uh, actually, th this, um, with, uh, this includes uh, use of some other graphical hardware that allows for an increase in the uh, gra you know, color depth, the resolution, and, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a huge leap over yeah, old, old Commodore technology. And not to mention the music that you're hearing isn't just, uh, you know, a, uh, a fancy uh, re-rendered song off the Commodore. This is actually uh, music for the new hardware. The, so this is exactly how it sounds on the Commodore, which is a great, you know, great improvement over the SID.
vertical shooters were, you know, pretty much the F, uh, first person shooter of uh, the 80s. Uh, they're my favorite, anyhow. And that's their website if you uh, want to go check out their product line. They've got a lot of interesting things. Another fun game they do is I don't know if anyone's familiar with the Bastard Operator from Hell or BOFH. They uh, actually distribute this game on their website for free. It's based uh, on the text online and the stories. And basically the storyline is you're the bastard operator from hell. And you ar arrive at work late and find that, you know, there's a paramilitary activist group that's taken over the whole place and have taken, instead of human hostages, they've taken over servers and printers and, you know, network racks and they've placed bombs all over them. So instead of alerting the authorities, you fight them single-handedly. It's just a nice, fun, mindless game that I waste a lot of time on. I actually wasted a lot of time on it before I wrote this, which I think is part of my problem. Uh, the companies that I've re reviewed right now are just really small in comparison to the international community that's out there. I and mean, there's just tons of other companies. Uh, most of them, I'm surprised with uh, the lack of internet connectivity they have. They're still doing the whole mail order catalog thing. Uh, I mean, they're just cir you know, circulating these project, uh, products, mostly in Germany and uh, you know, uh, outlying countries that around that region. And it, it's, they're just pretty closed off. And I mean, you know, what, what's the big deal? We have PCs that are you know, pushing two gigahertz and over a gig of RAM. You know, why should we care? Well, it's true that the C64 is a vastly small you know, in, in system comparison, but it's efficient in what it does. If you take some of the software that's been coded over the years for the C64, you'll see some of the most elegantly coded pieces of software written in assembly or machine language. And I, I really think that um, some of the modern, modern code pales in comparison. Like, you know, some of the resource wasting high level languages that are used to do some of the most simple things anymore. It, it, you know, to me, it's sickening. It's like hunting chipmunks with a 10 gauge, you know? Oh, here's a file handler. I get visual basic. Boom. You know, that. That, that's pretty much how I feel about modern programming anymore. <laughs> Sorry, preschool teacher in me coming out here. I do voices and shadow puppets. And um, let's see. Uh, recently, a big problem that the communities faced is you know as time progresses, the number of C64 shrink, and so do the original pieces of hardware. So we have all these wonderful add-ons, things of that nature, but we have, you know. We may upgrade one Commodore, but we're having a hard time rummaging through dumpsters, going to flea markets, stuff like that, and finding old Commodores. Um, the other thing is the board design is being pushed to its max with some of this new, new technology and stuff that's been uh, developed. At finding workarounds is just getting damn near impossible lately. Um, the unlikely remedy of this problem just came in the beginning of the 04 Christmas year. Um, in the novelty electronic market, you know, they've had like the multi-game joysticks like the uh, Atari joystick that has like 30 games in it and the ColecoVision joystick all these little things well they they did that for the Sega Genesis the Nintendo and now they did it for the Commodore which was released as the DTV and it was exclusively sold to QVC and I believe I think it was after Thanksgiving they had it up for sale you know uh, it mo mostly to target the nostalgia community and actually here's their commercial for the product it'll come up here in a second I didn't like the commercial all much I thought it was kind of cheesy but I thought I'd include it and actually there's some really fun games that are on there. It is a lot of fun to just sit down and play it. video games in one TV ready joystick. Tune in for a special one day price on Friday, November 26th. Part of holiday shopping weekend only But the uh, special one day price has gotten even lower cuz I think their sales weren't quite as big as they had hoped. Uh, little did I think the unsuspecting public know that, you know, even though this just seemed like a little piece of novelty hardware uh, um, the the real agenda by the designers who actually made this joystick um, were to the furtherance of the C64 and the stabilization uh, the stabilization of the uh, platform for decades to come. The uh, joystick operates just like any other. You turn it on, you play your game. That's about it. It's pretty one-sided. Operates on AA batteries. But when you open it up, 
you know, with your favorite screwdriver, just you find that it's a completely fully functional Commodore 64, and it's uh, actually no bigger than a playing card. But it has actually it has it has chips that are based uh, from the same family. They're just newer, but they allow full emulation of the old hardware. Um, let's see, I lost my place. <laughs> um, it, but it, the improvements over this is it's uh, actually faster processor, has double the RAM, has an enhanced video chipset, and also has all the interfacings for a disk drive, a compact flash attachment. It's got, I mean, they, they wired this up. They, they knew what they were doing when they made this, pretty much. They, they made it as a means, because they, they knew that pretty much the Commodore was never going to come back out, you know, into the mainstream again. So, um, <laughs> I, I don't know whoever designed this. They designed it in such a way it was easily hacked apart and you could turn it into a fully functional Commodore. And it's about, the board is just about that big, actually. I think I got a picture of it here. And I mean, there's, on the back, there's some more interfacing. But r right up there are some of the, the four main interface ports, actually ones for another joystick. And I mean, this can be used to mod it, you know, and uh, mod it in other, you know, smaller cases. And I think the best part about it is the small form factor of it all. Um, let's see. And um, also there's, with the video chipset, it allowed for a VGA monitor to be um, interfaced to it rather easily. So it, it goes from just being the, you know, cool old school microcomputer to actually a real viable platform again. Uh, let's see. And not, not to mention, you know, it's fully backwards compatible with all the old software, as well as, you know, new software can be written to, to support the new, uh, um, the new features to allow for, um, you know, higher processor rating, larger color depths. Um, so I, I think it's it's pretty exciting now because now now there's just a whole new platform born out of this, and that pretty much I to me proves the diligence of the C64 community, pretty much separating you know us from the uh, crowd of just classic computer enthusiasts to like uh, pretty much the realm of the fo foaming mouth rabid fanatics that, you know, pretty much I am and pretty much everyone else that really is, you know, pretty much loves the Commodore is. That's you know, how I am. <laughs> and, uh, you know, will, th will this technology last another 10 or 20 years? I, I really can't tell. But one thing can be certain that the ideals and the community based on the technology that the C C64 is built upon will still be present and continue to be every bit as useful as its uh, wasteful competition. <laughs> I told you it was fast. That was it. Oh, actually, yes, there is users groups. On, um, Lemon64.com has a a pretty good forum system. Uh, oh, I didn't include that in my presentation. Um, they, you can you can go back to Lemon64, and um, actually, yeah. Oh, there there are Earls and up there, but just Lemon64.com. Um, DTVhacking.info is another great place to go. It has all the old spec. I mean, all the specs on the new board. Um, how to interface it. It, it pretty much gives a a total how-to on how to get a new modern Commodore running in just about an hour with uh, little to no soldering. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, there's also, with the joystick that was released, there was, um, there was a preliminary release of about 10,000 units that not only just had the interface, um, the interfacing ready, but they actually had sockets al already soldered into the board. So all you did, had to do was make your own uh, connectors and ha get, get things interfaced. And um, that they had to cut back a little because their sales were not as much as they'd expected, but the interfacing's still there. Um, let's see. That's, so uh, those are two real good places to go for resources. Um, the dtvhacking.info has, I mean, forums, and it's already stocked with so many threads, it'll pretty much answer any question you have regarding it. Anything else? I could dance or sing or something. But hey, you have a guitar, don't you? 
bring it on in, they sing some songs. But yeah, so that's about it.